eyes are the pair of organ for sight they are situated in the deep protecting bony cavity within the skull of the organism uh, in, a, in a chamber or in a portion which is known as the eye sockets and are usually capable of absorbing and processing light energy by which the surrounding can be completely visualized with the help of this particular organ now different animals have got different varieties and forms of eyes where each and every one of them has got a separate property of their own but the major baseline is always to view the things that are surrounding it now by the help of their eyes the different type of forms and textures and uh, designs that they have got the organism are capable of viewing things which are very far apart or can actually contrast between the objects that are placed in the surrounding can see various colors and forms of the object uh, or even can um, like highly do all of those things together now depending on the eyes we can judge the organism whichever it is because to some extent it is the eye which is capable of showing uh, the expression of the like inner feelings of the organism sometimes like definitely with some organism we are unable to do that but with many of the cases it is like it is said in a way that the eyes they speak whatever things that the organism or whatever things that the person even is thinking about sometimes it is it can be well expressed by the help of their eyes so not only a visual organ but depending on the way it is looking at things sometimes a mental state can also be judged by simply looking at the eyes but that is a completely different field of study we are not concerned about that we are concerned about how and what the form of these eyes are and believe me these eyes have become such an important thing in a life or organisms every single organisms even in human race because without this we cannot visualize anything and to some extent it becomes a center point of object of any any living organism whenever we look at any organism we do look into their eyes and it becomes so important that in various of the culture we have different ways and forms of ex- like depicting it talking about eyes the part of them so eyes are compared like composed of is actually a, like uh, a globe uh, in, in a round oval shaped structure and um, this structure it majorly has an outer covering called the cornea then we have a lens system by which the light can be focused straight onto the retina which is at the back portion or the innermost inner wall of the eyes where the receptor mainly is present uh, and then by the help of that uh, it can be clearly viewed and clearly processed by the optic nerves that are running inside and taking all all the images and then sending it straight to the brain now talking about the outermost part which is the protective layer called the uh, the sclerotia is the outermost part means the part which is exposed to the surrounding or exposed to the environment and is the one which needs to protect the eyes from the ex- external environment we can say is actually a, a layer of dense connective tissue called the sclera the outermost layer is called sclera definitely it will be transparent because it needs to allow the light to pass through it so uh, it is going to be transparent now part wise it is like the entire eyes are covered with this sclera and then we have um, this inner portion which means the area the main area through which the light uh, goes inside uh, and 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 falls into the like uh, falls into the con into the into the retina region is what is known as the cornea so it will be the most anterior most part of the uh, of the eyes and is actually the like co- the one that is present on top of the pupil region so pupil 
and the iris is actually the one which uh, focuses our like visual acuity we can say like it's, it's actually the one which uh, which we we observe whenever we see into an eyes because this is actually the colored portion of the eye because rest of the portion is actually white in color and it is this area where we are going to find that some sort of color is there means if we say a person has got brown eyes or green eyes or blue eyes anything any color we say uh, it's actually this area which is showing the color so the area this entire area which is known as the iris are nothing but ciliary bodies and there are numerous ciliary muscles are also there which is contracting and relaxing it's capable of doing that being a muscle it can contract it can relax and ultimately that will increase or decrease the width or the diameter of this central most this cavity like shape that we see which is called the pupil through which the light can actually go straight inside the inner portion of the eyes so pupil is that central aperture and iris is actually the ciliary body and the muscles along with the ciliary muscles which are responsible of opening and closing this aperture so that the like things can be viewed very nicely because it may happen that the individual or actually the person the human is actually in a well lit environment means excessively high amount of light is actually there so in that particular case this entire uh, thing it actually relaxes and makes the pupil a little bit like small because that time then less amount of light will go through it otherwise if high percentage of light runs through this pupil the lens inside will magnify it and ultimately can lead to some sort of damage to the internal retina of the eyes uh, and to avoid that on uh, this thing this pupil it actually remains small it becomes small the vice versa is also true that when the person is in a less lit or dim lit uh, environment it actually wide opens it opens up widely and allow as much light as possible to go through the entire thing this is a like magnified image of the entire thing where we see that the ciliary uh, muscles are there pulling the iris and we can see at the very like bottom portion is where the uh, the pupil can be viewed very nicely this is a scanning electron microscopic image of the eyes from the internal side now the one that is present at the uh, like underneath this uh, iris or underneath the pupil will be the lens now lens is actually a kind of um, a suspended uh, you can say it's actually biconcave uh, bi structure and uh, this actually remains inside I, i'm sorry it's not a biconcave but rather a biconvex structure uh, which is like a kind of like a little bit of uh, crystalline in nature and uh, this actually is present inside the eyes suspended through this suspensory ligaments which you can see it uh, like this um, uh, kind of like uh, triangular kind of shape uh, structure that is there holding the entire central part the central body is actually the lens that round shaped structure at the very center of it and the pupil is entirely dilated here by the help of chemicals um, so relaxant like uh, chemicals are added so that the entire thing can be dilated properly and then we can see the eyes inside i um, mean the lens inside okay and what we are seeing here is actually that the lens remaining like completely suspended on the suspensory ligament and in reality what happens is like this suspensory ligament are uh, they have their own ciliary muscles and the ciliary muscle can pull it or relax it that way the entire lens can actually change its shape because of which light can be properly focused uh, straight onto the retinal surface because if the light is not being focused to the retinal surface we won't be able to see it nicely because it is the retina which has got the receptors present in it uh, with, with which was like with the help of which we can actually see the things so if light is not falling there properly uh, we won't be able to see anything so that's why 
this lens it changes its shape its, its shapes are actually usually changed a lot now let's talk about the this retina so retina it majorly comprises of photoreceptor cells called the rod and the cones and right on top of it we are going to find that the like optical nerves are actually uh, present so here if we just increase the size of the picture we can see here uh, all the rod and the cone cells are present at the bottom and on top of it uh, this yellow color cells that we are seeing here they are actually bipolar cells bipolar neurons are present uh, each taking up information from the rod cells and the cone cells underneath that and is relaying the message to those neurons and ultimately the neurons are uh, taking this entire optical they, they, they form the optical like um, fibers optical uh, nerves this entire central optical nerve which runs through the eye in the middle of it and that is what is known as the optical disc of our eyes keep in mind it is the optical disc where we won't be able to uh, process any image because it is like through right that particular spot uh, or right that particular space uh, this like there is only optical nerves are there there is no photoreceptor cell present so that's why that particular area is considered as a blind spot in our eyes so this is actually the layer uh, structure of the entire eyes where we find like the rod cells and the cone cells they are all arranged on top of the uh, the sclera of the eyes means the back of the sclera we can say so uh, this this is the this is the entire shape of the layer of the retina there is actually another image for that uh, before that let's 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 just see a little bit of you know, this uh, demos like our uh, image for this um, cones and the rod cells so what we are going to have is actually the top segment means the two cells they look entirely different the cones are comparatively smaller in size to that of the rod, uh, rod cells and rod is actually elongated rod like shape only and the cone is named such a way because it has a conical shaped uh, top region of the uh, top so uh, what we will see is actually the top regions they have this disc uh, called the lamellies it has a numerous disc on top of it uh, and it is right there where we are going to find that it has a large amount of uh, this like photoreceptor pigments being present there and what happened is the photoreceptor uh, pigment or the photopigment of our eyes they the moment they come in contact with the light they actually uh, undergo chemical changes uh, chemical conformation changes and all they, they you can say it actually enters a chemical reaction it starts a chemical reaction and with that chemical reaction it actually sends a signal it creates a signal which is received by the bipolar neuron on top of it and then the bipolar neuron takes that signal and that signal is processed in our brain then later on and we actually start uh, seeing such image whatever it is we visualize it we, we we interpret that particular signal as a particular image within in our brain in our mind so the photopigments that are present in the rod and the photopigments present in the cones are entirely different now rod cell they have um, a, a pigment called the rhodopsin or the visual purple which is a derivative of vitamin a means from the vitamin a this particular chemical is being derived from and uh, the cone cell on the other hand has got entirely different set of proteins which are called the erythropsin, the iodopsin and the cyanopsin uh, which are like different kinds of photopigment, photopsin pigments. Um, it is said or it is actually well known that our uh, road cells are responsible for seeing the uh, images, process the images even in the low light condition uh, because uh, it has a very... Uh, high sensitivity towards absorbing this uh, like any type of uh, like uh, means any type of red light red uh, red wavelength it, it can easily process that so it is actually called this uh, the twilight vision or the dim light vision which is usually uh, we see with the help of our road cells means in a dim lit condition we can easily view anything with the help of the road cells on the other hand the cone is actually responsible for giving us the colored vision because it has the colored pigments in it and this colored pigments can help us uh, view anything that is colorful even the contrast of anything means whenever we see something like it is a very big tendency we, we all have noticed it that in a static environment in an in environment where there is nothing moving there 
we are looking at certain place we are talking to somebody if within the like any in in any visual field in our visual field if any time there is anything moving immediately our brain focuses our like uh, focus our mind to that particular sector it, you have noticed that many times you have seen that if if not try and see it like it, it is always possible you you will notice that that any time you see anything moving around in your surrounding in your visual field your eyes will always tend to like see that thing properly and that change in the pattern what is happening in your surrounding means actually you're seeing the change of color in that particular area and that your cone cells are actually able to show you and seeing that we immediately we try and focus to see like properly what is present there so what we are going to see is like usually normally in our eyes the presence of road cells are comparatively very much high is is a high quantity of road cells are present cone is in scarcity you can see that in this particular image here that the entire thing is this like the green color cells that you are seeing there uh, they are actually all uh, means it's actually colored green with the help of computer uh, software so this this entire thing is green color tubular like rod like shaped cells that you are seeing are the road cells and the conical shape cone cells are present in between them now this is a image showing you the presence of high amount of rod in the entire retina surface whereas the cones are very much limited same thing can be noticed here also there are tremendously high amount of rod cells are present where the cones are very scarce in the entire area and um, means here definitely you won't be able to see it very nicely here but still that is actually the entire pattern of our uh, of, of our neuro means the entire retina that we have and on top layer you can see that the bipolar cells are all present which are the uh, neurons bipolar neurons they are all present there taking up the entire thing and we are uh, processing image with the help of that now that is something that is present in high amount isn't it and what we are going to find that in a particular place in our eyes there is a very high concentration of comparatively high concentration of uh, the cone cells with respect to the rest of the portion of the eyes and that area is the macula lutea is called this yellow region actually the optical nerve in this image it appears yellow and the macula they appear is kind of like a little bit dark in color but uh, it is actually that area which is called the yellow spot especially the one that is marked as the phobia or it is known as the phobia centralis is or what is known as the yellow spot in our eyes and the optic nerve which is going like which appears as bright yellowish in color in this area is actually the blind spot because it is that area where our we cannot process any image due to miss absence of any photoreceptor cells so what we are going to find here is that in the macular regia or the macula lutea region we are going to find a little bit increase in concentration of uh, or number of uh, the cone cells and uh, especially in the phobia centralis where we find comparatively very high amount of uh, cone cells and it is the area where we have the maximum visual resolution means our entire light whatever is falling onto the surface of the retina it is focused maximum in onto that particular spot and while the moment like we see anything uh, where, where where whatever light is falling in that area will be prop like properly focused or properly processed even the best image that's why we find that even in we have a very big uh, like field of vision yes but it is at a certain spot where we can focus it very nicely straight it, it seems like really straight into our eyes and it is because the lens is set such a way that it it bends the light and it sends point like the focal point is lying right there in the phobia centralis and that is why whenever we look at anything straight we find that we can see that very nicely with full focus full contrast and proper image we can see whereas the thing surrounding it it appears slightly blur because we can see that but it is not in proper focus because there is the the we don't, that is not falling in the phobia centralis that light is not falling in the phobia centralis just by moving the eyes in the eye socket we can actually like bring that particular thing into focus 
but then again the same thing is happening there we are seeing that whatever thing we want to see within our visual range we are seeing that by focusing light straight onto the fovea centralis that means it is that area where we can see the image perfectly rest of the area it is it is we can it will be processed but processed less comparatively less so that is what we are going to find in within our eyes like there is all the like portions that are you know, that are there in our eyes now only two things left to discuss about which will be the aqueous like the two fluid that is present on in our eyes a uh, comparatively liquid like structure uh, within the cornea and the uh, like the top of the lens which is called the like the chamber which is called the aqueous chamber or aqueous cavity containing aqueous humor a liquid a clear liquid which is produced by the ciliary muscles that are there or the ciliary bodies that are there actually and usually like uh, it, it is being produced by the help of processing the lymphatic vessels that are coming around that area so all that uh, liquid that is there on top of that uh, our, our lens is actually what is responsible for uh, like the nourishment of the cells around that place along with it it actually washed the entire surface plus also it has been uh, like notice that it contains immunoglobulin or our uh, or, or, or defense proteins antibodies as, as it is also known as uh, and that antibody is somewhat is giving a kind of uh, protection against any kind of infection or anything that is that is entering that's why any time we have any sort of infection happening in this area uh, it actually reddens this entire sector and that's why we call this situation as conjunctivitis an inflammation of the conjunctiva and somewhat in the aqueous humor region also next uh, is a jelly liquid which is present in this vitreous cavity which is present between the uh, lens and the retina and that large chamber which makes up somewhat like the four fifth of the entire eyes uh, is actually filled with a gel like substance uh, and that gel like substance uh, it contains a small amount of uh, macrophage cells also which is responsible for giving uh, like uh, actually protecting that particular area from any dead cells or remainder of any kind of cells anything that has fallen like any dead tissue can actually like disperse into that area so these macrophages will simply go there and grab that thing and destroy it so that way it keeps that particular area clean uh, and infection free also plus uh, that area actually is what is responsible that particular gel is what is responsible for giving the shape to our eyes it is it is considered the vitreous humor is the one which is responsible for maintaining the shape of the entire eyes aqueous is also helping in maintaining the shape outside the lens and definitely both the liquid is going to be completely uh, transparent so that the light can pass through it very nicely and also its refractive index is kept similar to that of the lens so that uh, there is no hindrance in uh, any uh, any no, not exactly as a as the lens it actually keeps it such a way that uh, the light is going to be focused very nicely onto our retina uh, 